What's going on guys? So today I'm going to be making a kydex sheath for this tiny little bushcraft knife I made a while back. Uh, I do have a video showing you how to make this particular knife even though it's not this exact knife. It's actually a larger version of this exact knife and I'll link that video up here somewhere. I think it comes up on this side. I think it comes up on this side. So without further ado, let's start making a sheath. First thing you want to do is tape off the blade, use a couple of layers of blue tape, and this will protect the blade and it will also provide um, a little bit of clearance inside the sheath. I'm using four layers of blue tape here. It seems to leave a nice clearance between the sheath and the blade of the knife. This is much better to do with a uh, razor blade, but uh, I don't have one handy, believe it or not. So that right there is about what you want. You got four layers of blue tape on there and that'll provide a little bit of clearance between the sheath and the knife blade. So I can't remember what thickness this Kydex is, but this is actually the thicker of the uh, two materials that I usually have. Um, I thought I had some thinner stuff lying around, but I can't find it anywhere. I'll put a title down here of what this thickness actually is um, and the material that I usually use for this. This is usually what I use for like belt loops and stuff, but since I don't have any of the thinner stuff, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. So I'm gonna be making a fold over sheath design uh, which is basically going to be one piece of kydex and the piece of kydex is going to be folded over uh, to make the knife sheath. So I'm just marking out a square piece of kydex here and using tin snips to make my first cut. Uh, you can also score this stuff and snap it. There's a bunch of ways that you can cut kydex. If you use any sort of high speed saw uh, usually the stuff will end up melting back together which you'll see here in a second. And here I'm just spraying it down with water and wiping it off. You want to keep the kydex as clean as possible because uh, the kydex will scratch on both sides. And here I'm just preheating my oven to around uh, 400 degrees. Uh, having a nice uniform heat inside the oven uh, seems to help heat the kydex nice and evenly. So let me give you a quick look at my uh, kydex press here. Uh, this thing's super thrown together. I just have a couple of old door hinges. Um, I literally have uh, two layers of three quarter inch plywood laminated together with screws. And that sort of forms the, uh, the base of the whole thing. I literally threw this thing together out of scrap pieces that I had laying around. I didn't buy a single thing for this. Um, the padding, this is just blue foam pad from Walmart. You can get this in the camping section. I'll try and find this exact pad and leave a link to it below. Other than that, I've got four layers. Uh, if you're doing a uh, thick knife, which most of them are going to be about this thick or uh, even thicker, um, you're gonna need at least two layers like this because you need room for those layers to conform around the knife. Now, if you don't have clamps, you can set this thing on the floor and stand on it for 15 or 20 minutes, uh, but it's much easier to buy a couple of clamps like this. I would buy the higher quality clamps. If you buy the super cheap ones, like these from Harbor Freight or Walmart, they'll break on you um, almost immediately. So don't buy the cheap ones, buy the good ones. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this piece into the oven on the rack. I usually put the shiny side, or this side, down so it doesn't uh, mar up or scratch up the other side, the, uh, or, or the side that you see. Now you don't need to leave this in here for a long time. You wanna sit here and watch it. The second you walk away, this stuff will melt all over the inside of your oven and that's not a good thing. This is what Kydex looks like if you heat it too much. See how it's starting to get uh, pliable? As far as how much do you want to heat this up, um, it's really hard to explain. I would highly suggest cutting off a little piece of scrap and experimenting with it first before you throw um, a big piece in here like this. But again, sit here and watch it and keep an eye on it, especially um, different parts of the oven can heat it up at different speeds. It is sort of hard to explain what Kydex feels like when it's at the right temperature for molding. Honestly, leather comes to mind. Um, a nice thick 
uh, or medium weight leather is sort of what it feels like when it's heated to the correct temperature. And here I'm putting it into the Kydex press and actually have the knife turned around backwards and we're gonna press the thing as tightly as possible. I left a little bit of Kydex hang out of the side of the press so that I could pull it tight against the spine of the knife. You also wanna make sure you have everything ready to go, unlike I have here where I'm kind of fumbling around with clamps and stuff, trying to get the Kydex pressed together before it cools. Um, having everything laid out in the correct orientation and having your clamps ready to go is a good tip. Um, don't do what I'm doing here and fumble around with your clamps. Now you're gonna wait a good solid 10 to 15 minutes before you open the press. Otherwise your Kydex will still be moldable when you open the press and you'll basically ruin your mold. Now I'm just following the contour of the blade with a pencil. I'm leaving about three quarters of an inch and this should provide enough room for the bolts later on uh, to hold the belt loop. And I'm using a scroll saw to um, cut the sheath down to size and the scroll saw as you can see will uh, certainly cut through it but it'll melt it back together at the same time. And we'll just clean up the rough edges on the belt sander with the 220 grit belt. And if you're wondering why I all of a sudden switched to voiceover, it's because my neighbor decided to mow his grass. Now I'm cutting a piece for the belt loop. I'm cutting the piece an inch and a half wide. Um, the length I'm not exactly sure of. I'm just cutting it plenty long enough in order to allow for the standoff, which you'll see in a second. You definitely want to cut this uh, extra long because the standoff is going to eat a little bit of length away. Um, from your piece and just cleaning it up real quick on the belt sander Now I'm using my actual belt to mold the belt loop uh, you don't have to do this You can simply fold the piece of kydex over and leave it at that Just leave enough room for a belt to slip through there But if you have the actual belt that you're going to be carrying the knife with it's always nice to mold it to the particular belt and here I'm just sort of holding the belt loop onto the knife sheath in order to get a correct um, ride height for the sheath. You can adjust the ride height for the sheath by adjusting how far up or down the belt loop sits on the knife sheath. So now I'm just gonna heat up one end of the belt loop in order to create an S-bend and that will create our standoff. Now it's actually easier to do this with a heat gun because a heat gun will heat up um, kind of a specific section where an oven will heat up the entire thing. So you have to be careful doing this in the oven. Um, I have a heat gun, but it's at another location and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it in the oven. Once a piece is heated enough to bend, uh, simply make your S-bend. I'm using my little Kydex press here in order to keep the uh, belt loop flat, and I'm just making an S-bend with my fingers, um, and that creates our standoff. Now in order to mount the belt loop to the sheath, I'm gonna be using, I believe they're number eight Chicago screws. Once I'm happy with the belt loop location, I'll just clamp it in place and drill two holes for the screws. Now the drill bit I'm using is a specialty Kydex drill bit. I think its official name is Kydex Thermoform Sheet Drill Bit. It is a number eight and it's specifically made for drilling Kydex. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, you absolutely don't need to buy one of these specialty drill bits. You can just use a regular quarter inch drill bit and it'll do just the same. It'll drill a hole through the Kydex. It's not gonna be a super clean hole, but if you're using Chicago screws, it really doesn't matter. These specialty drill bits really just leave a cleaner hole than a regular drill bit does. They also, um, they're easier to drill a more accurate hole um, than a regular drill bit because it has um, a little point on the end that doesn't walk all over the sheet as you're trying to drill it. Honestly, I gotta say one of the hardest parts about messing with Kydex is simply finding the correct materials that you need to buy for the sheath that you're gonna be making. There's probably thousands of different Kydex products out there. Chicago screws, rivets, eyelets, um, all kinds of different sizes. Um, there's different thicknesses of Kydex. Um, getting the right thicknesses and the right sizes of everything is kind of tough. Um, one of the easier things to do, I think, is to just um, bite the bullet and buy a kit. Um, it's going to save you a lot of time and hassle in trying to source all the correct materials. I'm going to try and leave links to everything that I'm using below. I'm also going to try and leave a link to a good starter kit.
So that was a couple days ago, and uh, yeah, my memory card corrupted, and I lost a bunch of files. I lost a bunch of files at the ending, um, and I lost a bunch of files at the beginning. That's why the beginning of this video is kind of like it is. Anyway, the sheath is almost done. I just got to do a couple more things to it. Hopefully my card doesn't corrupt again. This is the new card. I'm really hoping it's the card, not the camera, um, because about a month ago, I did almost drop this camera into a five-gallon bucket of water, um, and it fell on the ground and corrupted the card then. So I really hope it's not the camera, because I don't want to have to buy a new one. So rather than go ahead and uh, start from scratch and re-record this whole entire video, which took me like a day to do, um, I'm just going to quickly reenact the things that I did to the sheath uh, where the files corrupted. That, that little piece is the only thing inside that entire, entire case. I have no idea where that went. All right guys, so I'm just re-sanding everything that I uh, did the other day. And basically I'm just sanding over, rounding over all the hard corners on a 220 grit belt on my belt sander. Um, you absolutely don't need a belt sander in order to make a Kydex sheath. You can do all of this by hand. But a belt sander certainly is nice. Now I'm just gonna cut off some of the excess at the bottom of the sheath. I'm gonna do that on the scroll saw. And again, you absolutely don't need a scroll saw to do this. You can just use a regular old uh, hand coping saw. And again, we'll just clean up the edges. And we're just giving everything a quick sand with 600 grit sandpaper. You can sand it dry or you can sand it wet. All right, so I got everything kind of sanded um, sort of the way I want it. I'm not completely done sanding, but before we go ahead and bolt the pocket clip on um, or the belt loop, we got to adjust the fit of this knife because right now it won't go in. I don't know if the camera's picking this up or not. But basically what I want to do is flare out the top of the sheath here so that the handle will uh, clear this section. Once it clears that section, um, it'll kind of sit down in here and all the retention will actually be from this point. Now you have to be really careful doing this because if you add too much heat, you will ruin the mold. And at this point, you basically ruin the entire sheath. So be very careful when you're doing this and just take it really slow. Um, I'm just using my fingers to kind of um, mold the, the kydex around the knife. Um, you don't need it that hot. It just needs to be hot enough uh, to where it's pliable. It doesn't have to be super pliable because we're not making a mold, uh, but it does have to move somewhat. And then just for good measure, I made a small uh, back relief cut on the back of the sheath. And this will just um, allow the knife a little bit more clearance to go in and out of the sheath. And then again, just touching up the sanding. Then I'm just gonna take this outside, spray it off with water, give it a nice cleaning before final assembly. You really wanna make sure the inside of the sheath is completely clean. Um, a lot of times little Kydex pieces like to hide inside there. So uh, before you assemble it, uh, make sure that you pull it apart and get all those little pieces out because they are really hard to get out and sometimes impossible to get out if you assemble it. And it's time for final assembly. Uh, I'm just going to screw everything together with Chicago screws and red Loctite. I'm using red Loctite because it's permanent. I do not want this thing to come apart for anything. Uh, keep in mind that this is a left-hand carry sheath. So if you're following this video exactly, this is a left-hand version. If you want a right-hand version, you just have to flip the pocket clip. You can actually make this sheath uh, ambidextrous and drill holes in both sides of the belt loop. That way you can flip the belt loop um, from side to side. And there we have it, the completed sheath. Nice thing about this sheath is that you don't really need any specialty tools in order to make this. Um, you really just need a piece of Kydex, some Chicago screws, um, some way to heat the Kydex, a small oven. You can even use your kitchen oven, but you have to be really careful not to melt it inside your kitchen oven. The nice thing about this is that you don't need a Kydex crimping tool or a crimping press. Um, you can do everything with a screwdriver in order to crimp the sheath together. It's a really simple design and it's really easy to make. All right guys, that's it for the super simple sheath build. Um, 
If you like this video, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.